Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to simplify a radical expression, a very radical one, because we have the square root, and inside the square root, we have another square root, and inside that square root, we have another square root. So we kind of need to denest two times. So we're going to talk about denesting, which is basically, these are called nested square roots, and pro reversing the process, getting rid of some of the radicals, is called denesting. I'll be presenting uh, two and a half, maybe three methods, Let's start with the first one. I just want to show you different approaches. That's why I will briefly mention the third one. All right. So for my first method, I'm going to start working with the innermost radical here, which is the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5. How do you simplify this, right? Well, here's what we can do. I'm going to write this as, first of all, notice that 6 is 5 plus 1, and 5 is 5 times 1. So we can go ahead and write this as the square root of 5 plus 1 plus 2 times the square root of 5. And if you think about this very carefully, if you kind of like call this x and call this y, x times y is going to go inside the radical. So this part is just going to be 2 times the square root of xy. And guess what? This is equal to the square root of x plus y plus 2 times the square root of xy. Maybe I'll write it this way because that's more standard. Let me write it that way, x plus 2 square root of xy plus y. And this is under the radical square root of x plus square root of y squared. And notice that a square root of x plus square root of y is positive for real values of x. So this is directly equal to square root of x plus square root of y. But that just means square root of 5 plus 1. So the innermost radical is going to turn into that. But our expression was the square root of 13 plus 5 root 5 plus the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5, the, which is the part that we just simplified. So this part turns into that, root 5 plus 1. So let's go ahead and substitute that. 13 plus 5 root 5 plus root 5 plus 1. That's going to give us another radical expression. 13 plus 1 is 14 plus 6 root 5. And we can pretty much use the same idea, but instead of a 6 here, we would like to have a 2 inside the inner radical. Make sense? And we can achieve that by just splitting up the 6 into 2 times 3, and then writing the 3 as square root of 9. In other words, putting it inside or multiplying by root 5. If you multiply root 9 by root 5, you get square root of 45. Awesome. Now we can use the same strategy. And that strategy basically depends upon the following. Find two numbers whose product is 45 and whose sum is 14. Those numbers are 9, 9, and 5 because their sum is 14 and their product is 45. And this means the answer is square root of 9 plus the square root of 5, which is the same thing as 3 plus the square root of 5. So this is going to be the answer using the first method. Wow, the first method took a while to do, right? Let's see if the others are going to take this long. Anyways, the answer is 3 plus root 5. Now forget about the answer and let's do the second method. Pretend you don't know the answer, okay? So for my second method, I'm going to do the following. Uh, and it's going to start with the same idea. I want to simplify this because once I simplify this, the rest is easy. To simplify this, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to pair it up with its conjugate which, uh, because it's usually helpful to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and write it like this and call this A. And then guess what? I'm going to square both sides. Yeah, oh, not like that. The whole thing squared and the whole thing squared. Now when you square A plus B or X plus Y or M plus N, whatever that is sum, you're going to get the first thing squared plus the second thing squared. Let's make it non-standard this time. Plus 2AB or 2XY or 2MN, whatever, 2 times the first term times the second term. And it's going to be 2 times under the radical 36 minus 2 root 5 squared, which is 20. And that's A squared. 2 root 5 cancel out. 6 plus 6 is 12. This is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. Plus 8 is equal to A squared. A squared is equal to 20. A is equal to square root of 20 which is 2 root 5. Similarly, okay, similarly, if you set something like this, square root of 6 plus 2 root 5 minus square root of 6 minus 2 root 5, set it equal to b, 
square both sides and then you're going to arrive at the following. This is going to give you 6 plus 6, which is 12, minus, remember we got 8 from there, but this time you're going to get 12 minus 8 instead of 12 plus 8. You can just, you know, copy that. will be B squared, and B squared is 4, which means B is equal to 2. Wow. So A is 2 root 5, B is 2. So what is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and put it in context. What is A, what is B, right? Well, this was our A, right? and a is 2 root 5, and this was the b. Notice that the sign changes, and these are both the same conjugates. And guess what? You are looking for the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5, this one here. So let's fix the 5 first. So it makes sense if you just add these equations, right, and get rid of the minus 1. And now this is going to give you 2 times what you're looking for, which means you got to divide both sides by 2. If you do that, you get square root of 6 plus 2 root 5 equals root 5 plus 1. And obviously, if you square this, you get that, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, great. So, and the rest is the, similar to the first method. I don't think I'm going to walk you through the same thing again one more time. You can go ahead and check it out because all you have to do is plug it in and go with the rest. Make sense? All right. Cool, we're not done yet because we still have to do the third method. Sort of. Okay. For the fir uh, third method, let me rewrite the original problem again. This was the original problem where we have to denest a few times. And now here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on this again. So how do you simplify? That's critical, right? I mean, before I can simplify that, I can't really do it. By the way, can you just set it equal to x and square both sides until you get rid of all the squares? Yeah, you're going to get like a, I don't know, quartic, hexic, septic, whatever, some type of high degree polynomial, I don't think you can solve it. I mean, if you can solve it, you'll find the answer in a radical form, hopefully not this one. Anyways, so let's see how we can proceed here. My goal is to evaluate this. So I'm going to consider the following, which is a slightly different approach. I'm going to assume that this can be written as square root of a plus square root of b. I think this question came up in my other channel, the shorts channel, CyberMath2. Somebody asked about if this could be generalized. Yes, it can be generalized, and it's kind of fun to do. Anyways, just assume that a and b are integers for the sake of simplicity because we have integers on the left-hand side. And then we're going to, obviously, a and b must be rationals in this case. Uh, we're going to square both sides. Let's go ahead and do it. Square, square. You're going to get a 6 plus 2 root 5 equals a plus b plus 2 root ab. So it kind of comes down to what we talked about at the beginning. But anyways, from here by comparison, you get that a plus b is 6 and ab is 5. Let's go ahead and write it as a system. This is like a really simple system to solve. And just by guessing and checking, you're going to get a is 5, b is 1. By the way, a and b are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which one is which. And the answer is going to be square root of a plus square root of b. Therefore, the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5 can be written as root 5 plus 1. And then the rest is easy. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.